New reporting by CNN details, quote, exasperation and dysfunction inside Kamala Harris' frustrating start as vice president. According to the report, there is a strained relationship between the West Wing and the VP, saying, quote, key West Wing aides have largely thrown up their hands at Vice President Kamala Harris and her staff, deciding there simply isn't time to deal with them right now. The piece clearly caught the attention of the White House and other Democratic allies of Harris, who quickly coalesced around the vice president and attempted to squash the rumors. Press Secretary Jen Psaki tweeted that the VP is, quote, not only a vital partner to President Biden, but a bold leader who has taken on key important challenges facing the country. Here's what Representative Jim Clyburn said about the reporting. I've been reading about this, but I'm not aware uh, of anything of that sort. I was at the vice president's uh, residence uh, not very long ago. I didn't detect anything of uh, any kind of tension, but I don't detect anything that anybody should be concerned about. Brianna Joy Gray, former national press secretary for the Sanders campaign and host of Bad Faith Podcast, is here to give her take on the reporting, whether it could signal a turning tide in how the media treats Harris. Good to see you, Brianna. It's good to see you as well. So on one hand, I always like to be careful because, you know, this this hit piece on Harris was pegged to a lot of, you know, anonymous reporting. And I think it's very easy to get people to gossip and say bad things about their bosses and coworkers if you give them total anonymity. Uh, on the other hand, you know, we do know, I, I think that Harris, you know, Harris is not as popular with the public as the White House would, would like her to be. It has saddled her with a lot of uh, unenviable tasks, and that has not helped her. What do you think? Yeah, the real concern here uh, that the White House should have is not some bad press, but the fact that from the beginning, the people have never been that fond of Kamala Harris. She has historically low approval ratings for a vice president, especially considering that she hasn't done much of anything. And let's not forget how poorly she failed in the Democratic primary when many people felt as though she was going to be a front runner very early on. Ryan Graham, I think you wrote an article in The Intercept pointing out that Bernie Sanders outpaced her with black voters by a two to one margin, you know, that she had to drop out of the primary before her own state of California because she was polling, I believe, fifth behind Andrew Yang. And all the while, the media still tried to frame her as the next Barack Obama, this great um, kind of mixed race hope that was going to be a unifier for the country in some really reductive way. And I think that might have worked against her because a lot of people woke up to the fact that representational politics doesn't move the country forward in the way that people had hoped with Barack Obama. And they were waiting for her to show up with some actual charisma, with an agenda, with a plan, with policies that, that really match the moment. She never did. And now she's in this position where she's having to rise and fall on her own merits. And what we see now is that she is, in fact, falling. And and as somebody who's you know covered White Houses and, and and covered Congress for a long time, I can say that if if you want to write one of these stories with you know people on the deep periphery, then and give them anonymity, that's that's fairly easy to do. But but to to get quotes like that and, and to get insight like that from people who are kind of in the inner circle is actually not that easy to do, even even granting anonymity. And this is the third or fourth major piece like this, if you remember the New York Times had a devastating piece after her cam campaign imploded. There was, I think Politico did one maybe several months ago. And so, you know, this is of a piece with that reporting. Is there something about it being at CNN.com that is even uh, more kind of frightening to, to Harris for her political prospects? CNN has almost supplanted MSNBC as the, the kind of lodestar or the north star for uh, for Democratic primary voters. If CN if you know if you've lost CNN, you know what hope do you have as a Democrat? You know, I'm not sure about the outlet, what, but what raised big red flags for me was all of the uh, the covering that comes out of the the Jen Psaki tweet, the the Jim mm -hmm. Clyburn appearance. It has very much the air of the kid who comes home from the school complaining about bullying and the mother who says, "Don't worry about it, honey. Everybody loves you. You're perfect. Never change." You know, it's it's a kind of delusional sort of gaslighting, and it it, it very much has the feeling of thou thou dost protest too much. And also, did you notice that Saki in that tweet mentioned that she had been given the border as an issue, mm. which is a major bone of contention for Harris, mm -hmm. that she because she feels like she's been saddled with this unwinnable issue that is 
you know, that is going poorly for Democrats and for Saki to be like, no, no, no. Actually, we love Kamala Harris. In fact, she's managing the border. Yeah, well, this this brings up this question that people have raised for months now as to whether or not Harris is being intentionally set up by the White House. Now, the article points out that Joe Biden says that he gave Kamala Harris that assignment because that's the assignment that he had been given by Barack Obama. However, the fact that she was given that and also voting rights reform, when we all know that can't go forward without filibuster reform, which Joe Biden has been pretty consistently not for (laughs) in a meaningful way, not advancing it, obviously. is intentionally putting her in a position where they can have a plausible excuse to move past her. The article cites a possibility of moving her into a Supreme Court position in a way to promote her up and out of the way to make room for someone like Pete Buttigieg. And many kind of black consensus builders on the internet were tweeting furiously outraged about the idea that they would pass over the first black woman VP for Pete Buttigieg and saying that black voters were going to revolt. However, I am skeptical that black voters are going to do much of anything, given that there was a an unprecedentedly large uh, outpouring of interest in the streets last summer with the George Floyd protest that resulted in zero concessions out of Joe Biden and just a faithful promise to vote for him no matter what, as long as it prevents a Republican from being in office. Yeah, the whole thing to me just kind of smells fishy, right? Like the, this whole Kamala, these hit pieces against Kamala Harris and then the people from the administration saying, no, 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 everything's okay. It's almost like, it, I mean, it does feel very planted. It feels like they absolutely are trying to paint a picture of Kamala, you know, out the door. Um, and definitely just the, the the pieces most recently about Pete Buttigieg saying he's the, the most uh, powerful transportation secretary now ever, Right, giving him all this power, boosting him up, uh, and, and it, it does feel like they are preparing for a swap, and they're trying to figure out how they're going to get the American public to agree with this. So they're doing this kind of, you know, hit and, and because the whole thing, this particular piece is so weird. What would her beef be with the White House? It seems like it would be the other way around. I promise you that nine out of ten Americans can't name a single other transportation secretary. <laughs> so. <laughs> Transportation secretary ever is like uh, being the tallest kindergartner at the circus. Um, I don't know that I can name another transportation secretary, so I'm not. Let's not even knock the American people over this one. Right, it, it me, the ninth out of ten Americans. <laughs> Look, uh, yeah. I, the, the real the really that tickles me here. Um, look, both things can be true. Kamala Harris can be treated sort of unfairly by the White House in this moment, and it can also be true that she is not uh, a, a distinguishing herself, shall we say in this role. And it would be one thing if the White House were saying, look, her poll numbers aren't good. She wasn't the charismatic candidate we thought we had. We stuck her in there because we felt like Joe Biden is an old white guy. We needed a more diverse ticket. And now we need to reconsider because it's not looking good for us in midterms. And then two years after that, or four years after, you know, depending on what Joe Joe Biden ends up doing. But we're going to try to sideline Pete in. The, the, the cynical, like the, the disastrous part is the belief that Pete Buttigieg is going to fare any better in that exact same mm-hmm. role. Instead of just believing that, I don't know, some combination of favors owed and a different kind of identity politics is going to get us across the line. Shuffling in individual players with different demographics or vaguely different kind of personalities sort of, uh, is not going to solve the fundamental question and problem of why Democrats aren't connecting with voters and haven't really been able to do so in at least 10 years. Yeah, it doesn't seem like Pete Buttigieg is any more popular than Kamala Harris, quite frankly. Maybe slightly, but we're talking slight. And I don't know I don't know if I uh, phrased my last statement correctly. I'm, I'm not sure if I meant that. I meant that Kamala Harris would have uh, the, more of a, So there, the story was that she had a beef with the White House or the White House has a beef with her. Mm. Which one was it? Which way was it going? Because it feels like be, that she. Well, no, right. they're all she, mad she at feels, each other. She feels set up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It just seems like they would be the ones that would that she would have a frustration, I suppose, with the White House for not giving her more. Right. And and and, well, she, and she's frustrated that the White House is just get, is setting up Secretary Pete to distribute free money to everyone for the next eternity yes. while she toils in obscurity on issues doing, doing that are done. unsolvable right. and make piece. people mad. But she's but the not. Piece was she saying, was never likable in the first place. So. But yeah. Pete, well, look, Pete Pete is, was saying I, that the White House was <laughs> against her. Right. That they didn't want to. They didn't have time for her. Like, what were they? What are? What is she doing that they? that this source, these anonymous sources, say that the White House is frustrated with her about, like, what is she even doing to be frustrated about? 
I mean, the whole, it's well, just. I, <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but I, I would like to point out that the story says that one of the concerns is that she is taking too much advice from her, the same consigliere that she's had around her since her campaign. Um, her sister, Maya Harris, who was also advisor to Hillary Clinton in 2016, we all, all know how that went. There's been some stories of impropriety coming out uh, based on the fact that she's also Maya Harris's husband, who's a I believe a uh, senior uh, chief legal counsel, I believe at, at Lyft, um, you have, uh, or Uber rather, you have, you know, Mina Harris, her niece being caught up in some of these, you know, are you doing, publishing too many books, something. selling too many t-shirts, right, right yeah. off, of, off of your mother's name. There's been a lot of messiness that people could have legitimate qualms about. At the same time, if I were Kamala Harris, I am not one of her advisors, but if I were, I'd say maybe you should try pulling out some of those ideas you had during your primary campaign that weren't so bad. See how the White House, get, give, give, give the White House a reason to get mad at you because you bring up this idea of $2,000 recurring checks, or the fact that you very rightly said that um, uh, health care is a human right, and right. that's something that's been dropped right off the agenda. As long as she doesn't go back to uh, arresting parents for uh, their children being uh, truant. <laughs> Brianna, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it. Always. And tomorrow on Rising, we have another great show planned for you all. Max Alvarez and Henry Rogers are in for Team Rising to weigh in on the big news of the day. You won't want to miss that. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss any of our new videos. And we will see you all tomorrow. Bye.